This video complies only with Division 4 of the Oregon Occupational Safety and Health Codes. This video has been revised since it was originally produced in 1996 to reflect new safety standards. In addition to what you will view, you must be aware of the following. Training must be done at least annually or more frequently if needed. Training must be specific to the equipment used at your location. Training must be specific to the location or work environment in which you will be using a forklift. Machines are designed to help us do our work, and when it comes to lifting and moving heavy loads, the forklift is the machine that allows us to do jobs we could never do alone. But as with all machines, the forklift can be dangerous if not operated properly. This program will cover the basics of proper operation and safety procedures for forklifts so that you can learn to use your lift trucks safely and efficiently. Forklifts fall under the definition of an industrial vehicle. They are to be used for the movement of materials, not people. And they are not for highway use. For the purposes of this video, we will focus on the use of forklifts as they apply to agriculture. We will look at standard forklifts and rough terrain forklifts. Only operators who have received training and have been authorized by their employer to operate the vehicles can drive a forklift. This is the law. Operators must have good vision and be physically and mentally fit. And it is best that no one under 18 years of age be allowed to operate a powered lift truck. A forklift is like a car in some ways. It has a motor and drivetrain to supply power to the wheels. It has a steering mechanism, and it has devices to let you control the speed and direction of movement. But unlike a car, it also has a powerful hydraulic lifting system. The steering system is also different from a car, in that the forklift often steers with the rear wheels, not the front. The rear wheel steering and a specially designed axle allows sharp turns and precise movements. It is important that you realize there are many types of forklifts made by a variety of manufacturers. And while there are many things they all have in common, there are also differences. Some of these differences can be in the controls, instruments, and maintenance practices. Because of this, you must study the operating manual supplied with your lift truck and become familiar with these differences for every kind of lift truck you operate. It is very important that you, the operator, inspect the forklift at the beginning of every shift. If the vehicle is found to be unsafe or there is apparent damage, you should report it to your supervisor immediately and it should be locked out and tagged according to your employer's lockout tagout procedures. These are the areas to be inspected. The tires. Is the inflation of pneumatic tires correct? Are the tires in good condition? Are all running lights working? Is the battery in good condition? Batteries should only be changed or serviced by maintenance personnel or those specifically trained to do so. Check the forward and reverse mechanism and the lift and tilt controls. Are the forks or other load engaging devices working properly? With the forklift shut down, visually check the condition of hydraulic hoses for pinch points and worn spots. Check chains, making sure the cotter pins are in place, and make sure carriage bolts are secure. Then, with the forklift turned on and under pressure, check the hydraulic hoses for fluid leaks by running a piece of paper over all the surfaces of the hoses. Never use your bare hands to do this. Are the brakes working properly? Is the steering mechanism okay? 
and is the fuel system operational. It is a good idea to keep inspection logs for each forklift in operation. It takes a little effort, but once you get in the habit of doing so, it isn't that bad. This will give you a verifiable record for regulatory agencies. It also provides a maintenance history of each machine and can point to major problems that might develop. Once again, it is very important that you study the operator's manual for your specific forklift and complete the suggested safety inspection as required by your employer. When fueling your vehicle, it is extremely important to follow proper procedures. Always turn off the motor and do not restart it until the fuel has been properly handled and the fuel tank cap has been replaced. Refer to material safety data sheets for proper personal protective equipment required for your fuel application. In the case of a fuel or oil spill, follow your company's policy for cleanup procedures and never use an open flame to check fuel levels. Before loading a trailer, there are several things you need to do. First, check to make sure the truck driver set the brakes. In addition, chalk the rear wheels to prevent the trailer from rolling away from the dock when it is being loaded. If the tractor is not attached to the trailer you are loading, make sure the front of the trailer is properly supported. Is the landing gear in good shape and properly set? If you are unsure of the reliability of the landing gear, you should use a nose jack. Next, inspect the inside of the trailer. Is the front wall solid? Are there any spongy spots or holes or broken and cracked decking in the floor of the trailer that could cause the forklift to break through. Finally, check the dock plate going into the trailer. Make sure the plate is properly secured between the dock and the trailer. These simple steps may mean the difference between safe loading and an unnecessary accident. It is very important that you follow these procedures. Failing to do so could cause a serious accident. This illustration shows what can happen if the trailer is not properly secured and the dock plate is not properly situated between the dock and the trailer. As you can see, a position shift of the trailer or dock plate can have a serious consequence. Now the trailer is ready to receive a load. But before proceeding, we need to discuss load safety. There are several things you need to know about the load capacity of your forklift and load arrangement. The load capacity is the weight that your forklift can safely lift and carry. Each forklift must have a label that states its load capacity. Most of the forklifts used in nursery applications are rated to carry 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. If you are unsure of the weight of the material you are supposed to carry, you need to ask your supervisor for this information. The majority of the loads you will be moving will be safely under the load limits of most forklifts. But some loads can come close to exceeding these limits. A safe way to test if a load exceeds a forklift's limits is to lift it a few inches above the ground and drive slightly forward and backward and apply the brakes. If the forklift is unstable in any way, do not attempt to move the load. The scientific principle involved here is center of gravity. The center of gravity of an object is the single point about which the object is balanced in all directions. It is very important to understand how the center of gravity of a load and forklift combined affects the stability of your forklift while on the job. First, we'll start with the center of gravity of the load itself. In the case of this pallet of trees, the center of gravity is pretty much the center of the pallet because the load is evenly distributed over the entire surface. When judging the center of gravity of an odd-shaped load, it is generally at the center of the bulk of the weight. In this side view, notice where the center of gravity of the load 
and the center of gravity of the forklift are. Now watch what happens to the combined center of gravity when the load is lifted. This is important to know because when you pick up the load with your forklift, the center of gravity of the forklift and the load combined will be determined by the weight and arrangement of the load. For example, in this illustration, the center of gravity from front to back is here. If the load is above the rated capacity of the forklift, or if it is placed incorrectly on the forks, the center of gravity will be off and cause the forklift to be very unstable. The center of gravity of this load from side to side is here. Again, it is very important when carrying a load that you have the center of gravity between the front wheels. As you can see from this illustration, if the center of gravity of the load is too far off to one side, the whole forklift could tip. Once you are sure the load is safely within the capacity of your forklift and you have arranged the load to optimize the center of gravity, the next concern is the stability of the load. After picking up the load, gently tilt back the mast in order to cradle the load. Always keep the load as close to the carriage as possible. A load that is not properly secured or stabilized will tip or fall off the forklift. If this happens while being moved, the result can be serious damage to the material and possibly serious injury to people in the area. Remember that you, the operator, are responsible to know the proper load capacity of your forklift. You are also responsible to know how to properly place and secure the load in order to ensure safe handling of material. If you ever have a question about the load capacity of your forklift, center of gravity, or stability of the load you are working with, ask your supervisor for assistance. Asking questions can ensure your safety. If you have to temporarily leave your forklift, you must follow these procedures. Make sure you lower the load, put the forklift in neutral, and be sure to set the parking brake. If you are ever going to be out of sight of the forklift or more than 25 feet away, you must also shut it down. We will now discuss some general safe operating procedures. Again, you as the driver are responsible for operating your forklift safely. This includes driving at safe speeds. If there is more than one forklift operating at the same time, you must keep at least three truck lengths distance between them. Always use extreme caution when approaching blind spots and intersections and sound the horn as a warning. And never pass other vehicles going in the same direction. When moving with a load, the forks should only be high enough to clear obstacles and unevenness in the floor or ground. Raising them too high will affect the center of gravity and create a possible hazard of hitting overhead objects. When ascending or descending a grade with a load, you need to travel with the load upgrade. For example, when traveling down this ramp, you need to keep the load uphill. Always go straight, never at a diagonal. If you need to go up an incline, you must again keep the load uphill. When you are ascending or descending a grade without a load, the opposite is true. You must always keep the forks facing downhill. Always use extreme caution when ascending and descending ramps and inclines. Following these simple rules can mean the difference between safe operation and a serious accident. You should always be looking in the direction that you are traveling. You must also have a clear view of your path. If the load you are carrying obstructs your view, then it would be better to travel backward with the load trailing. But you must do so while always looking in the direction you are traveling. When backing up like this, go at a slower speed and be extra careful when turning so that you don't hit objects with the load or cause the load to tip. Never travel faster than is safely possible. Make sure your steering motions are smooth and sweeping. Never turn or stop suddenly. This can cause the load you are carrying to shift or fall. 
It is your responsibility to look out for people. Pedestrians always have the right of way and never drive a forklift up to someone standing in front of a fixed object such as a wall. Never allow a person to cross or stand under the forks when they are raised, whether or not there is a load, and never carry passengers. If you need to lift people with the forklift, you must use a special lift basket that meets OSHA regulations. It must be secured to the mast or forks, and when it is lifted off the ground, never allow a person to step out of the safety basket. Observe all posted signs, such as height restrictions, weight restrictions, speed limits, and stop signs. And never park your forklift where it would obstruct access to fire extinguishers, fire escapes, electrical panels, or stairways. Also, avoid running over loose objects, especially when carrying a load. If something is in your path, stop your forklift following the proper procedures, get out, and remove the object. If you ever find yourself in a situation where your forklift is going to tip over, it is very important that you follow these procedures. Never jump from the truck as it is overturning. You will be much safer if you grab onto the steering wheel, brace yourself, and ride the truck over. This is one reason why it is so important to wear your seatbelt at all times. Remember, a forklift is very heavy, and if you try to jump out, you are much more likely to be crushed by the forklift itself than to get out safely. The bottom line is to know your equipment. In addition to all that we've discussed in this program, watch out for differences in the operation of your machine. Be aware of the temperature of the vehicle. Watch the gauges. Listen for changes in the sound of the motor, the lift mechanism, how the tires sound against the floor. Notice any changes in the smell, such as something that is too hot. Also, look out for unusual oil or fuel smells. The more you know about your machine, the wiser you will be to its safe operation. If you ever have a question, ask your supervisor. It's better to be safe than sorry. In this part of the program, we are going to discuss the proper procedures for operating a forklift on rough terrain. The definition of a rough terrain forklift is a hybrid powered industrial truck with oversized tires and high ground clearance, which can be used on unstable and uneven work surfaces. As we saw in the first part of this program, a standard forklift is to be used on smooth surfaces such as pavement, concrete, and packed surfaces. Rough terrain for our purposes refers to operation on gravel, dirt paths, and any out-of-door site where a standard forklift would get stuck. As you can see, a rough terrain forklift has a high ground clearance allowing it to cross terrain that a standard forklift would get stuck in immediately. Its large tires help prevent getting stuck in soft ground and mud, and provides a smoother ride for both the driver and cargo. Some rough terrain forklifts are equipped with four-wheel drive. Just as with standard forklifts, it is very important that you conduct a thorough inspection of the vehicle before every shift. Once again, Every manufacturer's rough terrain forklift is a little different, so you must refer to the operator's manual for specific checkpoints. If you find anything wrong, make a note of it on your checklist and report the problem to your supervisor immediately. All the same rules that apply to refueling standard forklifts also apply to rough terrain vehicles. If you follow the same procedures, you will ensure a safe working environment. Always turn off the motor and do not restart it until the fuel cap has been replaced. Know the load capacity of your forklift and the weight of your load. Just as with standard machines, this information is very important. There may be times, such as when working on very soft surfaces, that you will need to carry less than the rated capacity to avoid becoming stuck. And the same rules apply regarding the center of gravity and the stability of a load. Always keep the forks as far apart as possible for the load in order to have the greatest stability, and always keep the load against the carriage. In addition,
keep the forks as low as possible when transporting the load. Be aware of sloping surfaces when raising a load. If you raise the load at an angle, you could possibly tip the truck. When working with a rough terrain forklift, choosing a route is a very important decision that you, the operator, need to make. It is always best to choose the route with the least obstructions. If you must choose a route with bumps, slick spots, or loose material, slow down. Always keep a safe distance from the edges of ditches or excavations because the ground can give way. Remember that a forklift is very heavy and when loaded, it may easily cause the ground to collapse where another vehicle might not. Also use extreme caution when the route is muddy or slick, especially if sloped. Travel slowly and avoid turning, which could cause the truck to slide or tip over. As with a standard forklift, if your rough terrain forklift starts to tip over, never jump from the cab. Brace your feet, grasp the wheel firmly, and lean forward and away from the point of impact. Remember you should always be wearing your seat belt. When leaving the rough terrain forklift on an incline, tilt the carriage slightly forward and lower the forks until the tips touch the ground. Shut off the power and apply the parking brake. You may need to chalk the wheels if the incline is steep and the forklift is loaded. These rules apply even if the driver is going only a short distance from the truck. In rough terrain situations, the slightest movement of the truck, if it slides or rolls, could cause the truck to tip, especially with a load. The forklift is a tremendous machine and when used properly will make an impossible job by hand possible. But it is up to you, the operator, to always be alert to the safe operation of your forklift. If you follow the instructions you have been given in this program and study in further detail the safety procedures for the specific forklifts you drive, you will ensure that your work will be safe and productive.